Good morning, traders. It is Wednesday, September 20th. It is Fed Day. We're about two hours before the open. Thought I would get a video out. Let's take a look at our last pick. That's the point of all these videos is I want to show you the previous pick. We'll take a look at how it performed. We'll do some market analysis, and then we're going to find two new picks. I'm also going to show you some new features that we have in Option Stalker Pro. Lots of market analysis. So A, B, B, V was the long that I showed you Sunday evening. I still like the stock. What you'll notice in the background is the market. This is a D1 chart of the S&P 500, and it's important to take a look at what's been happening. These are the last four days, and you can see how the market has been steadily declining. What has ABBV been doing during that time? Well, we have this nice little resistance level that the stock is trying to break out through. And you can see that it's been able to hold the gains while the market has been drifting lower. This is a very positive sign because 75% of all stocks follow the market. Normally, when the market does this, we're going to expect the stock to drop below that resistance level, which has now become support. You can also see how the volume recently during this rally has been excellent. Now, I did try and simplify my screen. The lighter pen width for the trend lines, this would be the 50-day, a little bit heavier, that's the 100-day, a little bit heavier, that's the 200-day. So the major moving averages are on the screen. You'll also notice this light gray line. That's A, B, V, excuse me, it's A, V, W, A, P, E, and that is starting at the earnings release date and it is the anchored VWAP. I find that to be a very significant price level, provides both support and resistance, so I like including it in my charts. Now what you'll notice is that the stock is trying to float higher when the market has been down. I still like this stock. I think this stock goes higher. It sets up well. If you're looking for a more conservative play, distance yourself from the action, you would be selling it out of the money bullish put spread using that 150 strike price as your key support level. You've got both the AVWAP E and the 200 day moving average that you would be leaning on. Plus you have support right here at the breakout. I'm not doing a lot of bullish put spreads right now, folks, because I don't know what the market's going to be doing. We're going to get into that in just a second. So I'm really looking for shorter term day trades. If the market breaks out, and it could break out today on the FOMC statement, then we have an opportunity to do some short term swing trades. So ABVV, nice pick, still like it. I think this stock goes higher. The short that I had highlighted was PLNT. So let's take a look at that. That is continuing to sell off. And I had mentioned to you that Sunday evening when we looked at this, I said, this is a major breakdown. Let's put up some of our trend lines. These are automated trend lines. We can zoom out and see where those came into play. Those are significant price levels. And you can see that was a significant breakdown for the stock. It didn't just happen on a tiny little candle without much volume. This was a long red candle through a major support level closing on its low on massive volume. I'd mentioned to you, this type of formation is going to have follow through. And I didn't know what the market was going to do at the time. I certainly would have day traded this Monday and Tuesday when I saw the stock falling apart. What I was hoping for in the video was that the market might have a little bit of a bounce and that while the market bounced, the stock could not retrace into this long red candle. That would have told me that whap, 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 sellers are keeping a lid on it. They want out of this dog. Didn't quite get that because the market had pulled back on Monday and Tuesday. So the stock pulled back very nicely. There's the price action. This is a great short. Would I short it right here? Yeah, I would short this right here, but I'd rather have a bounce. I'd like to see a little bit of market strength. You can see how yesterday, so this is the D1 chart for the market. We're going to get into that in just a second, but we had a bullish hammer for the market yesterday. 
What did the stock do? It finished lower than the prior day's close. It finished below the open. Take a look at that five minute chart one more time. So mind you, this candle here, market probe for support, finished on its high of the day. What did the stock do? Sold off, couldn't get off the deck. Whap, 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 whap. Sellers in there, very heavy. So before I short something like this, I'd like to see a little bit of a market bounce. Maybe we'll get one today. And I want to see this same level of selling pressure. Maybe the stock can try and get up into this gap a little bit. But as soon as it starts to do that, it hits resistance and then you get a long red candle. That tells me that sellers are anxious. They want to get out of this stock. And I want to ride their coattails. Thanks for all your comments, by the way, on the light theme video. I'm going to be using that in the future. You've told me that it's much easier to see the contrast. Some of you are also watching your videos on a phone. This makes it easier for you to do that. Simply know that a dark theme is available on Option Stalker Pro. And in fact, many of you said that you prefer to trade with the dark theme, but you like to have these videos in light themes. So I'm going to continue to do that. We're going to go into the S&P 500 and take a look at what's going on right now. These are our automated trend lines, and you can see where they come into play. Most notably, you'll see this green trend line here and this red trend line here. We're going to talk about that. This is a wedge formation. You can see how price is compressing within this wedge. If we put up the major moving averages, the 50-day is really the only one that comes into play. The 100-day is well below the current price. If we break out of this wedge right here, we are likely going to test that 100-day moving average. And you can see we might even poke below it because there should be horizontal support right in this 432 level. So look for that on the downside if the market breaks down. On the upper end of the range, you can see how we've got this long green candle, right? or excuse me, this long green trend line right here connecting the highs. That puts resistance somewhere at the 452 level. We were pretty close to that last week, trying to get up to that resistance level, couldn't quite get through it. If the market rallies through it, we're going to test the 52 week high. So those are the two scenarios that could play out during this wedge formation. How do we trade this? What should we be doing? Well, you shouldn't be doing a whole lot of swing trading because the market could go either way from here. So let's wait and see. That's all the market's doing. It's waiting and seeing. It needs more information. There are buyers and there are sellers. And right now, they're paired off. That's why this wedge is forming. The green line here for the major indices, I use AVWAPQ, and you can see how the market is just below that level right now. In general, what has the market done since June? Well, this is your June price level, June 15th. So over the course of the last three months, what's the market done? Nothing. It's gone up a little bit, it's gone down a little bit, and now we're seeing mixed overlapping candles. Green, red, green, red, green, red. We don't know which way this is going to go. What's the Fed going to do? Are they going to stop easing? Is the economy going to fall apart? What's going to be happening with economic conditions around the globe? Inflation? Those questions have yet to be answered. When we have some clarity, and when one side or the other has greater conviction, they will be more aggressive and they will either force a breakout and then we'll have something to trade. We can get on that train or we will have a breakdown. So we simply have to wait right now and we have to keep our trades very short term. So let's talk a little bit about short term trading. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the origin of this trend line. You can see this upward sloping trend line is very significant. So on a daily basis, we could have a couple of different scenarios play out. This would end up being a bullish flag formation. There's your flagpole. There's your pullback. There's your trend line breakout. Zoom, gone. This could 
also be a double top lower high and we break down. So it's always important to see both sides of the coin. And this is a lesson that I was explaining to members in the chat room yesterday, because we come in and let's put the 50 day moving average up because it does come into play. And you can see how the 50 day moving average here is right at the top of this long red candle. And it is right in the middle of this wedge that's been forming. So we're below the 50 day moving average. We're below AVWAPQ. And yesterday we're below this major, major trend line. So I'm going to remove all the moving averages now that we have our bearings. I don't want to obscure the chart any more than I have to. And we're going to clear that off for a second. And we're going to take off our trend lines. And we're going to go into a five minute chart. So yesterday we come in, we get this gap down. Uh oh, we're through the prior days low with ease. Okay, that's pretty dang bearish. Now we get a couple of these long red candles. Hey, this looks like we're finally getting something going here. And we could see that there is some volume right in here. Really, really nice stuff. Hey, this thing is going to go to hell in a handbasket now that we've broken that long-term upward sloping trend line. One thing I had cautioned members was that when you, you see these long candles like this, what I would rather have is many candles that are decent size. We don't want puny, tiny little bodied candles, but when you start stacking, a lot of candles consecutively like this, it's more meaningful to me than blam, blam. Now you want to see instant follow through in this and we didn't get much of a bounce and we got some follow through. But the reason for that is that these candles here, they could be triggering stops. So once those uh, sell stops are flushed out, let's say you had buyers at the low yesterday and they put their stops down in there. Well, once they get flushed out, you hit kind of an air pocket, the bid dries up and without a tremendous amount of volume, which you can see there wasn't a whole lot of volume, you hit these air pockets and not a lot of transactions take place on these long red candles. But when you have many candles of a single color in a direction with decent size and, and decent volume also, then that tells you that as opposed to just a couple of five minute bars with some heavy selling, this is sustained sell, uh, buying. This is a sustained move. So I tend to pay more attention when I see that type of price action than when I just get one or two stacked candles. Now they could come on extremely heavy volume. And if there's some kind of news that's hit the market and you see this volume just go off the charts and then leak, 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 leak. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That that would legitimize that something's going on. We've got some pretty major news and this is going to be a sustained directional move. But in this case, you get a handful of long red candles, and then you simply compress in here. When are traps effective? Well, they're effective when you know how the other side is going to respond. And so in this particular instance, what retail traders are going to be thinking is break down, break down, break down. We've got that long term upward sloping trend line that's been breached. Yeah, this is it. This is going to be great. This is when everything is going to start cooking. Everybody is so afraid of what the Fed is going to do on Wednesday. Yeah, we're just going to follow right through and sink. That's tunnel vision. That's only seeing one side of the coin. And I'd mentioned to everyone, what if everything that you're seeing this morning turns around? What if this day finishes as a bullish hammer and we finish back above that trend line? How would that change the picture? How would that change your perception of where the market is going to head? All of a sudden, instead of this being a breakdown, now we're bouncing off of support and we're going to be heading higher. Well, that's exactly what the institutions 
figure in is they know that there's a major news announcement coming. And if they can squeeze you, lure you into a short and then shut the door on you, what are you going to be thinking? Well, roundabout in here, when you're shorting here, 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 here on the low of the day, you're thinking, oh, this is going to just absolutely melt down. Well, once you get this move here, now you're losing money. And now a day trade that you had planned on simply making big profits on because this thing was going to go to hell in a handbasket, all of a sudden you're faced with losses. You're also faced with the fact that, hey, what's my staying power in this position anyway? Uh, I don't have any because I sure as heck do not want to be short into the FOMC statement. That poses way too much risk to me. So they lure you in and they shut the door and they force you to take that position off at a loss. And that's why I suspected we would see some additional follow through buying today to put pressure on these shorts who were thinking, aha, trend line, breakdown, long red candles. So here's some of the clues yesterday that the market might not be heading straight down. First of all, context. The context is you are a day out from the FOMC statement, and we know that that typically produces big reactions. It poses a lot of risk to traders. So we want to make sure that we're not trading a lot of size. Tuesdays before the FOMC, they tend to be really dead. Usually we're going to just be inside the prior day's range, low volume, chopping back and forth. Well, that's a day that you don't do much of anything. In this particular instance, they kind of lured you in and broke that trend line, got you thinking, yes, this is going to be a good day to be short, and this is going to be a bearish trend day. There were opportunities to short. So I don't want to tell you that there weren't opportunities to short, but you keep your size relatively small, and here you get your breakdown below the prior day's low early. That's cool. Now you get some follow through. Hey, these are nice red candles. We're not seeing any bounce, any lift into this long red candle. So you're putting on some shorts right here, not big positions, starter positions. And you're watching this long red candle here. Now, what you don't want to see is long green candle, long green candle, getting through the open of this red candle. That would tell you that this was just a head fake to flush out some sell stops and that this move was just a fake and we're going to reverse and go right back into the range. What you wanted to see was that half of this long red candle would be preserved and you wanted this bounce to be very brief and very shallow. It was brief. What is brief? Well, brief would be less than six bars, less than a half an hour. You want to see those sellers return. You want to see a new low of the day. We got it. And as soon as we started taking out the support level right here, you could have added to your short positions. So we get another nice long red candle in here. You still don't have a big position on because you know that the FOMC statement's coming up the next day. Now we get into this chalky, choppy, chunky price action. Buyers are still not strong enough to get it off the deck. And we get this bearish 1OP cycle. Well, when this 1OP cycle ran and we had a bullish cross right in here, I thought that this cycle had ended, but it actually had a little bit more room to go. So right in here, I'm thinking, you know, this is just a marginal new low. We really didn't take out the low with any vigor, and we certainly didn't do it with what? Volume. There was no volume. It's drying up. Now we're seeing mixed overlapping candles. We got tails. We got wicks. This tells us the market's not going to be going anywhere fast. So now you get a bullish hammer off of the low and you get a long green candle that almost eclipses the open of this long red candle. In here, you've got to be careful with your shorts. You've got to be taking gains on your short positions. And this is where the squeeze was on. And now, all those shorts had to cover as fast as they could, and that's what spiked the market, and we finished very close 
to where the market had started a day and very close to where it had closed the previous day. So I hope this analysis helps you because context is so important. You can't be blinded by what you see on the daily chart and only see one side of the equation. And the one side of the equation would be breakdown, 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 load up on puts. Yeah, baby, this is going to be the one. You've got to be able to see the other side of it. What happens if we bounce off of this level? How does that change the picture? What if I have a bullish hammer here? We could go right back up. And that was support. So you can't get super aggressive here on any kind of breakdown. You have to have heavy volume. You have to close convincingly through that level. So that's why if we're swing trading, you don't pay attention to the candle until it's completed. When you're day trading on an M5 basis, you don't make any decisions from a technical perspective until that bar finishes. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a long red candle on heavy volume that looks super ugly. And in the last 10, 15 seconds of that bar, boom, 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 it changes to green. So you've got to make sure that those bars are closing below those support levels on heavy volume and closing near the low. That is when we can make a decision that, yeah, you know what? They could not get the market back through this level. That was some heavy duty selling and you wanna see follow through during the course of the day. So back to market analysis. Let's find a couple of stock picks, see what the market's doing. You're, you've got this long-term upward sloping trend line. You got the wedge formation. We're going to get the FOMC statement today. We're going to get a move one way or the other. Here's the problem. We're probably going to break out of the wedge because it's fairly tight. You can see that the wedge is probably between 450 and 443. So that's only 70 S&P points. It's not a lot. A couple of back-to-back -back strong days or weak days is going to get you through this wedge. I just don't feel that we're going to get any sustained movement in that direction trading opportunities that might span two or three days sure but major news coming out of this fomc statement not likely last week we had the ecb they raised by 25 basis points there's a 93 percent chance that the fed pauses today that's what everyone is expecting that's what the fed is likely to do there's a 50 percent chance in November and a 50% chance in December that they're going to pause as well. Well, that also means that there's a 50% chance in November and December that they could raise a quarter a point. So it's really a coin toss. We know the Fed's pretty close to the end of their tightening cycle. The ECB had mentioned as much, but their caveat was if inflation starts to abate, then they are going to pause. Uh, Bank of England, is expected to raise rates 25 basis points tomorrow. They just had a better than expected inflation number, came in at 6.7%. They're expecting 7.1%. So now all of a sudden, the probability of a 25 basis point rate hike tomorrow has subsided. But we have to watch inflation. Our numbers were really pretty hot. CPI and PPI, core inflation, still relatively hot. So we don't really know what the Fed's going to do. They're going to have a balanced statement today. They're going to say, yeah, you know, we're closer to the end of the cycle, but we're still watching inflation. We got inflation wrong last year, so we want to be vigilant. And the Fed's got a little bit of breathing room because the market is still near the 52-week high, so there's not panic right now. The economy has been relatively strong as well. So I just don't feel like anything is changing. We've got this doldrum that we're in we've got this trading range so we'll see what happens watch for a breakout one way or the other look for some follow-through maybe for a couple of days but nothing sustained and i believe that high and that low you can see that range horizontal support horizontal resistance 
I think we continue to spend time in that range until we have some new information one way or the other. The Fed stops hiking rates, inflation abates. Great. That's a good backdrop for the market. Or the Fed overstepped its bounds. The economy is really starting to tighten up. We're seeing a decrease in activity and credit issues are starting to loom. That's what gets you through the low end of that trading range. Let's take a look at a couple of my favorite searches. I'm going to go into, well, let's go into Pop Bull. And this looks for longer term breakouts and breakdowns. When I'm doing swing trading analysis, this is a search that I like to use. And we'll take off our automated trend lines for now so we can get a clean view of what's happening. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we'll take a look at a couple of stocks here. Range bound, nothing really going. Nice little breakout through horizontal resistance. Day trade worthy, sure. Yeah, we could do a day trade. Nice downward sloping trend line here. Broken to the upside. Yeah, I would day trade that. That looked pretty good. Decent volume. A yeah, little bit of volume creeping in. New high of the day. Yeah, this works. So that would have been a decent day trade. Not something that I particularly like. Oh, that's a nice chart here. Uh, WTW. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, so this is Willis Tower in Chicago. You've got a big gap down here. So that is a warning sign. You've got a nice little bullish formation here. This is a cup and handle formation. The dip here is half of what this dip was. And you've got horizontal resistance right there. Now we're through that. We're also through the 50 day moving average. That is a nice little rebound, and the stock does have a chance to possibly get in here and fill in some of this gap. It's got relative strength. Uh, it's got heavy volume. This is not bad. This is typically not the type of stock that I like to trade. I like to trade stocks that are out of the lower quadrant, which this one kind of is because the range has been fairly compressed. Let's take a look at that five-minute chart. That is some really nice, steady buying. So, by the way, let me show you a an alert. Uh, Haken Ashi is a charting method that's used. And when you use this method, you are looking for flat top reds consecutively, flat top red for follow through, and you're looking for flat bottom green candles. And when you go from a flat bottom green to a flat top red, that oftentimes signals a reversal and so what you would want to do on a chart like this and this is a new variable that we've just added is you might come in and say you know this looks pretty good in here but i don't really want to buy in here i'd like to see a ha reversal and i'd like to get an alert and then i'm going to evaluate what that dip looked like if the dip was relatively brief and relatively shallow then I can feel pretty good getting on this train. So you would right click, create alert, and you would go down to HA reversal. And we're going to be looking on an M5 basis. And when this is set, the stock was actually on a bullish HA formation. So it would have to go bearish and then bullish. So let's take a look at that. And so if you're in here going, yeah, you know, we're kind of poking through the high. I don't want to chase this. I'm going to set this alert. Here's how it would have panned out for you. So you get a flat top red in here. And then you get a flat bottom green in here. And you get your alert and you take a look at the stock and you go, okay, you know, I had a little bit of a dip in here. Got that HA reversal. This is where you'd be getting long. That's a pretty nice entry point. So that's one method that you can use. You can also use relative strength versus S&P 500. That would have gotten you in a little bit later, but still at a good point. So you set the alert here when the stock is still moving higher and you say, you know what, I'd like to see it lose its relative strength. Then I'd like to see it regain it. Loses it, regains it. 
when this elapses, when that happens, what did the stock do? How big was the dip? What I don't want to see is ka-chunk, 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 stock giving back all of its gains. That would tell me when I get the alert, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with this stock. That pullback was too big, and it tells me that there are aggressive sellers. But when the pullback is very minor, and when the stock stays above VWAP, you can be pretty confident that it is going to continue, especially when you've got nice orderly price action like this. Remember, yesterday the market sold off hard in the first part of the day. That's a big sell-off. What did the stock do? Inching its way higher. If the market recovers, which it did, this is going to be a nice stock to trade. So those are some of the variables that we've added. We're going to be adding a lot more. That's how the alerts work. And if you wanted to, you could have a series of conditions. And when they are all true, you could add any one of these variables. And when they are all true, you're going to get an alert. You could even use VWAP. Many day traders, myself included, I love to see what a stock does when it pulls back to its VWAP. So show me that dip to VWAP. I want to see that VWAP hold. So the stock is above VWAP, falls below VWAP, then it goes back above VWAP. What did the market do during that time when the stock pulled back? Was the stock's pullback completely related to the market? Because the market pulled back, the stock pulled back. If that's the case and the stock is still holding its relative strength and the D1 chart looks great, I'm all over it. Thank you very much. That's a beautiful entry point for me. So WTW could easily be a pick of the day. I like this pattern. I like the formation. I like the fact that this was support. Now it's resistance, resistance. Now we're through that resistance. It's become support again. I like this long green candle. I like the fact that the stock finished on its high of the day. I like the relative strength. I like the volume. I like the fact that it's through the 50-day moving average. Yes, I would be looking to day trade this stock. I'm not looking to swing trade it. So I would need to see market strength in order for me to be confident in swing trading anything right now. Fairly pricey stock, so option liquidity is probably not that great either. Uh, the volume was 700000 so not super liquid. Take a look. We're just going to go through a couple more of these and see if we can find anything else that uh, looks attractive to us on a daily chart. This is a nice little breakout here. CBOE, this is a nice grind higher, very, very choppy grind higher. Could set up for a decent, there's a nice breakout through that technical resistance level on heavy volume. This could be a nice candidate for selling an out-of-the-money bullish put spread if you feel pretty confident that the market is going to hold this support level. The 100-day moving average, keying off of maybe that 148 level. Just want to flip a few charts and see if we can see anything else that's coming up in here. Just going to go through pretty big sell-off, back through that resistance level, not overly interested in it. That's a nice breakout through resistance. You can see this is a great search. I mean, it's going to find a lot of really nice looking patterns that I would stay away from. This is nice. ACAM, I like this. I like the fact that the stock had earnings after the close. I like the fact that it rallied up. I like the fact that it preserved most of this gap. You can see it's back above the AVWAP E, and you can see how it's been compressing and it's trying to poke out through horizontal resistance when the market has recently been down. This stock wants to go. Look at that, volume's pretty good. So what happens is the temptation here is, oh, the stock's ahead of itself and I'm pretty happy with this gain, so I'm gonna take profits. Profit, 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 profit. But the stock holds the gap and buyers are looking to buy any dip and they have to get more and more aggressive because they realize that this gap is not gonna fill. I've got company on the buy side and I can see those offers being lifted. So I've got to be a little bit more aggressive. And that's why the stock continues to float higher. But this is not a fast mover either. 
something like selling a 205 200 excuse me a 102 50 100 bullish put spread that would work here but i would also day trade this to the upside let's take a look at the five minute chart and you can see this is going to be your pick of the day i like acan you can see how it choppy but it floated higher the entire day nice relative strength decent volume good volume to finish the day when the market had been down most of the day so flip side bearish pick and we'll go into pop bear and we'll see what we've got working on that side and we'll go back into the daily chart take a look at a nice bearish chart show me something that is really cracking down this is trying to break through those major moving averages it's leaking oil would like to see a little bit more uh, selling pressure than that uh, volume here wasn't great during that pullback so not super interested in that rmd this stock woof that's tough this stock is probably going to continue to drift lower this is just sellers exiting as fast as possible. You do run the risk eventually of a short covering bounce. That's what I would wait for. This stock is pretty far out of the gate right now. And you can see earnings after the close and it just can't recover. Volume's been pretty heavy. So you get that bounce and that's just a short covering bounce. And you want to see that bounce reversed immediately. And as you start to see that thing, you know there's more selling pressure to come. That's where I would join in on something like that. NIO, mm, okay, yeah, I like this. Break down through the AVWAP E, break down through the 200 day, 100 day. There's your earnings, just couldn't get anything going. This is a EV manufacturer in China. Let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, actually, let's put up our automated trend line, see where they come into play. Oh, yeah, we've got some nice little breakdowns here. You've got that trend line here that's been breached. You had a horizontal trend line that's been breached. A lot of congestion in this area. Once again, here's the key. A beautiful finish through this support. A gap down and selling all day long with a close on its low of the day when the market did what sold off initially bounce 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 buy 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 not this stock couldn't get off the deck heavy heavy volume this candle right here this is what we wanted yesterday for the s p 500 if you were looking at the short side and if you were looking at a sustained directional move. But it didn't happen. And we didn't take that position or have that notion until the close, which by the close, the, the market characteristic changed completely. In this case, we know it closed on the low. Sellers were aggressive. The entire day and so come in big breakdown oh this is beautiful nio is going to hell in a handbasket look at that so is the market but i'm not gonna rush i'm gonna wait for a little bounce and i'm gonna set my alert i'm gonna wait for the market it's relatively weak stock is weak relative to the market in here so i'm gonna set my alert and that alert's going to be triggered when it goes strong relative to the market and then weak relative to the market. So right in here, on a new low of the day, you look at this and you go, wow, this stock just made a new low of the day. That was a tiny, minuscule little bounce. Heavy, heavy volume. Heck yeah, I'm going to day trade the heck out of this thing. I highlighted this stock in the chat room yesterday. And look, couldn't find a bid all day so what i'd want to see is i would want to see today on the open i'd like to see a market rally and we're up about seven s p points early so we're going to get a market rally obviously i'd like to see the market stay below that av web q but 
it could rally up a little bit ahead of the FOMC statement. While the market is rallying, I want to see the stock have this weak, weak, wimpy little bounce where you get a couple of little fake little green candles with no volume. And then as the market continues to grind higher, the stock starts to lose its bid. That tells me sellers are back in there. Whack, 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 whack. Trying to exit all of the positions that they can. That tells me the stock is relatively weak. And that tells me I want to be short along with them. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hey, I've got something really cool that I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days. I've had three or four members who have recorded videos. And I'm going to be posting them to my YouTube channel. Please watch these. This is not me. This is These are people who have learned the systematic trading approach. They've read the articles. They've got Option Stalker Pro that they use to help them find great trades. They've learned from all the pros in the chat room. This is them teaching you. So it's not just about me being able to trade. It's about me being able to teach you how to do this. That's what really matters. That's what distinguishes one option from everyone else. Who cares that the person in the chat room can make money? There are lots of great traders out there. What matters is, can you learn how to do it? Is this a systematic approach that can be learned and replicated? And that's what these videos are all intended to do. So please watch for those. I'm going to be posting those in the next couple of days or so. Good luck with your trading. Good luck with the FOMC reaction. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.